Most of the videos on this channel are fun. You know, they're silly, top five this, top five that, but today's episode is kind of serious. What happens if it's too cold outside for reptiles and your power goes out? What happens in the event of other emergencies? Today, we're gonna talk all about it. My name's Adam, this is Diamond. You're watching Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles. Stick around. <laughs> This is an episode that I've been asked to do many times, but I just know it's not gonna do well because no one's gonna try to watch it until their power goes out. But if you stumble upon it first, here's what you need to know. And I hope that you're, everything's going well, because I imagine most people watching this are in an emergency right now. Let's just tackle the big one first. If your power goes out, this is obviously really important. I live in Canada. If the power goes out in February, well, I mean, we have gas for heat. So our home will still be heated, but the a lot of people have electric heating so if the electrical goes out that means that you don't have heat for your reptiles and for your house so if you're in my situation and you have gas for heat then you don't have to worry about it too much when the power goes out the gas is still going to work i mean there's issues with your thermostat and things but either way i've never had an issue so i mean in that case just make sure your reptiles stay warm they're in an area of the house where it doesn't drop below you know a freezing temperature if you have things like Fiji banded iguanas, then of course it might be more difficult because if it drops below 75, it kind of, they don't really like that. But if you have reptiles like leopard geckos, bearded dragons, whatever, and it gets to, you know, 65, they're going to be fine for a day or two. Let's suppose you're in an area of the world where it gets too cold and your heating gets wiped out too. This is a serious situation and you need to act right now. Or you should have acted before. Here's what I would recommend if you're watching this before a disaster happens. Get yourself a generator. This is like, I mean, the most expensive option and we'll go over cheaper options. But if I had to do it all over, right? If I had to say move to Texas where the power grid powers cheap, but it sucks and it goes down. And if things like what happened last year in February happen again, you're kind of pooched. So get yourself a generator, a gas power generator that can do your whole house. These are very, very expensive, but it will save your life and your reptiles lives and the whole bit. If that's not an option, get a smaller generator and attach it to a electrical panel that feeds your reptile room. You could do that too. We're working from like the best options to like the easiest options. So let's just keep going here. Another option is if you live in an older home, having a fireplace. I mean, my home had a natural fireplace. We changed it to a gas fireplace. So again, we're okay. I mean, as long as the pilot doesn't go out, we can turn it on if the power goes out and any, anyway, you understand what I'm saying. If you have a wood burning fireplace, this is another great option. A lot of people have these in their sheds, especially where I'm from. A lot of people have a wood burning stove that really can warm up a room really, really well. So in that case, just make sure you're stocked up on wood. But here's something that I think no one has an excuse not to have if this is a possibility. Hand warmers. Well, actually what's better, what's much, much better are the shipping warmers. So the uni heat, I think they're called. I don't know, I'll put the picture right here because they don't get as hot. These things get way too hot to be in contact with your reptile. Come here, buddy. So I would recommend putting a towel around these. Make sure that you're using a, a heat gun, right? Like a, what am I trying to say here? A temperature, a laser gun, right? To, to monitor the temperature because these will get way too hot to be touching your reptile. It'll burn them, right? If you use these, if you're a skier, you know. So wrap a towel around them and you're good to go. Or buy the ones that are made for shipping reptiles or shipping other goods, right? I used to uh, send flowers to the Arctic, literally to the Arctic for Mother's Day. I used to work at a flower wholesaler and it would be, you know, minus 20 uh, in May there. So we'd have to use these all the time. We'd send things to Thunder Bay and Nipissing and all these places where you need it to be warmer because the flowers will die. Flowers, you can't freeze flowers if you didn't know that. And these were like, I think it was 30 bucks for 40 pairs. So really you're getting 80 hand warmers for 30 bucks, Canadian, cheap. What I recommend is to have Tupperware containers wrap the hand warmer in a blanket or a towel or something so that it dulls the, the heat and then put the animals inside of a container. If you've got multiple, if you've got, you know, five ball pythons and hognose snakes and everything, put them in bags or put them in smaller containers or put them in pillowcases, something so they can't get to each other. The ball pythons together would be fine, I guess. All into a plastic tote and then put your heat warmer on the one side or several, however big it is. 
this is what I'd recommend because, I mean, you could stick the heat warmer inside their enclosure, but it's just easier if everything's together. And that way you don't have to have 20 heat warmers. You can have two or three in two or three smaller containers. Another option, if it's just for a very short time is using body heat. Now this doesn't work if you have a hundred reptiles, but if you've got a bearded dragon and a ball python, I would recommend putting the snake in a bag so it can't get to the ball python because I don't think a ball python would eat a bearded dragon, but just to be safe, right? Just for example, you can put them inside of your shirt. Now, literally just wear a sweater and put your animals inside of there. There's so many different ways you could do it in sleeping bags, sleeping bags, in pillowcases, and then put them inside your shirt or, or whatever, right? Get into bed and cuddle up with them. Uh, just there's a way to do it. Like I know this might seem like a big deal, especially if you're going through this right now and that's why I'm trying to get to the point, but just don't panic. Like there is a way to make sure this isn't going to be a death for your animals. Like we saw in Texas last year, seeing fish tanks literally frozen and ball python whole collections being wiped out. And sometimes it's unavoidable and I'm not putting shade on any of these people. I feel bad for absolutely every single one of them. But if there's any chance that you could prepare, I recommend preparing early. Don't wait until disaster strikes. I am not even close to being able to move to Texas yet, although I've been working on it for over a year. That's a story for another day. But I already have the money, literally thousands of dollars, put aside for a generator once I get there. Thanks to everyone who donates on the streams, by the way. It's part of where the money went for one of them. Either way, I'm prepared and I have these hand warmers and somewhere I have those heat packs too. I just can't find them, they're in my basement somewhere. But now that winter's coming, now is the time for me to think about it. Because if someone's digging outside and hits a gas line and all of a sudden the gas goes out, even if it's for only a few hours, if that day it's minus 20 Celsius, which does happen here sometimes, my animals are gonna be in trouble. So I have to do something immediately. Before we move on, I wanna say thanks to one of my favorite sponsors, Into the AM. I love your clothing. I just ripped this package open and this shirt fits me so perfectly. Uh, like of all the clothing brands that I've ever had the opportunity to work with, Into the AM has the best fit, quality, feels good, doesn't give me a rash, doesn't make my skin feel weird, and they have the coolest designs. And right now, if you want three graphic tees with really cool designs like this, you can get them for $55. Three tees for $55 if you use intotheam.com slash WWR. Click the link, intotheam.com slash WWR. Okay, let's get back to the video. Another way to do it, and I got flack from this the last time I talked about it on a stream, is heat your car. Get into your car with all of your reptiles inside of bags or whatever, and turn the heat on. Turn it off for a while, just keep it a temperature, right? Take one of your thermometers, because you're gonna have a ton of them if you have reptiles, right? And stick it in your truck, your car, your van, whatever. And then once it gets to, you know, 65 or 70 or whatever your threshold for the low temperature is, turn your heat back on, whatever. And I got this silly comment before, well, what about the environment? Well, if I have to pick between putting a tiny bit of carbon in the air or my reptiles dying, Sorry, Mother Nature, you're getting a tiny bit of carbon from my truck. Now, a couple things, if something's happening, like say a hurricane is coming or a winter storm is coming and you feel like there's a good chance that you're going to be out of power, if your animals get cold, you don't want them to be full. So make sure that they haven't eaten or you don't feed them right before. It's just not a good idea because if they're not warm enough to digest, that rodent, especially for snakes, will start to decay inside their body I had pictures sent to me, like I know somebody personally who had a Burmese python in an enclosure that was way too cold because of an event like this, that he fed the day before, and after two or three days, it literally regurgitated this half, like, decayed rat. Not good, man, not good. The berm was fine. It's a totally fine berm, but yeah, still, don't do that. And to put your mind at ease, temperatures do fluctuate. So if let's suppose the temperature drops 10 or 15 or even 20 degrees, most species are gonna be fine. Of course, there are different species that are very prone to temperature fluctuations and they're very sensitive, but like corn snakes, ball pythons, uh, Kenyan sand boys, like all these animals that are kind of bread and butter, they're gonna be totally fine if it gets down to 60 degrees for you know 12 hours, 24 hours, you'll be fine. Same thing with heat. If it gets a little bit too hot, same thing. You're gonna be A-OK. -okay. So I know this was a quicker episode. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. I wanna say thanks so much if you hit like and subscribe. Th these videos, I hope help you. If they, you think they do, please hit the subscribe. It helps get these out to more people. 
And as always, a special thanks to the Patreon supporters. You guys are freaking amazing. Without you, I mean, I, well, I wouldn't have a generator for when I'm to Texas, that's one thing. But you get discounts on the merch, extra videos. You get to see that really cool video. I did a vlog where I hung out with Dave for a day, Dave Kaufman. Anyway, all that and more for as little as a dollar a month on Patreon. And because we do these videos on Mondays and Thursdays, that means I'll see you in the next one.